Okay, stop me if you've heard this one before. Some person does something a little cringy online and then other people share it around and it becomes the big topic that week. Everyone talks about it, some other creators use it to make their own jokes, and the original person tries to respond and capitalize on the fame while also standing up for themselves. But within a few days, everyone gets bored and moves on to whatever's trending next. That's how a lot of internet stories go. That's just the pattern they follow. And the one we're talking about today is no different. Except until it is. This example begins normal and follows this formula, but only up until a point. And then a few key differences happen that set it apart from everything else, and the structure that we all think we're aware of gets thrown out. And I think anything that shakes up the internet is interesting and worth looking into. So today we're going to talk about the weird case study, the reaction, and the unique fallout of Jake Novak, the online comedian gunning for an SNL audition. And I know that doesn't sound like it's worthy of that big introduction, but it is kind of. Stay with me, you'll see. Before we get more into Jake and talk about how exactly he went viral, I first want to define this process that I explained earlier. The one that the internet seems to love so much. There's this pattern called the guy of the week that you see on apps like YouTube, Twitter, or TikTok. The idea is that one person does or says something that causes them to be the center of conversation or used for material for jokes by everyone else. It's like an inside joke that everyone knows and wants to reference, but only for a week while it's relevant. There's something about the communal aspect of it, or like the common enemy that brings everyone together, but I'm not a psychologist. This is Twitter. It's never over anything like dangerously important, it's like just the joke you want to talk about. It's the guy of the week, you know? It's a very casual, informal kind of group discussion, if anything. A recent goofy example that comes to mind is this one podcaster who made a thread about how he didn't help his daughter open a can of beans and instead watched her struggle for hours as a parenting moment. And when people reacted poorly to this, it spread like wildfire and it led to him being called Bean Dad. Nobody was talking about this guy before, but it took one viral thread about children and beans and all of a sudden, his reputation was just gone, just out the window. The people calling him out for his weird parenting styles just introduced the topic to people looking for joke material and all of a sudden, Bean Dad was born. What a weird sentence. Then, of course, since he was brought up, people stumbled upon old insensitive tweets of his and everyone shifted from the light joking to condemning him. He fought back, but he was already the butt of the joke, and being Bean Dad wasn't easy to shake when you're defending yourself. And then, like most internet stories, everyone moved on. Like, there stopped becoming updates, and the story got old, so people moved on to the next guy of the week, and now Bean Dad just lives on as like a weird reminder to not chastise your kids on Twitter. Being the guy of the week just means that your entire online presence is going to be under this lens of this communal online presence. They're going to laugh at you, some people are going to defend you, and it's just all out of your hands at that point. Sorry, Bean Dad. And that's what brings us to Jake and his video that went viral on TikTok. So, no more putting it off. It's time to react to this thing. Okay, now I have seen this video a lot, as I'm sure a lot of you have as well, but we still have to process the whole thing in order to understand where this entire thing started. So let's go. I want to be the next SNL cast member, and here's why I should be a contender. Hi, Lorne Michaels, I'm Jake Novak, and I know that you're feeling the heat because your roster lost Kate, Kyle, 80, and Pete. That means you got an open seat, and I feel I ought to be feeling it because when it comes to comedy songs, I kind of been killing it. All right, first break. How we feeling? Everyone still with me? When I first saw this video on my own TikTok feed, I thought it was an ironic sketch about how online comedians always jump at the chance to join SNL, seeing as it's hailed as the Mount Olympus of the performance on stage world. And every time there's a hole in the cast, people are always fighting tooth and nail to get in. But this video doesn't have any of that irony. It's just an actual audition tape that the creator packed into a TikTok and was hoping that the showrunner, Lorne Michaels, would find it, see it, and love it. In fact, Jake prompts people to actively push the video in his comments, which people did not react to, but again, we'll get there. The point is that he's actually hoping this video is his shot to auditioning, if not serving as an audition itself. So as we continue, keep in mind that this is all authentic and not meant to be taken satirically. Cause when it comes to comedy songs, I kinda been killing it. See weekly music videos in my jam, bruh. I'm a rapid rhyming hammy nerd like Lin-Manuel Miranda mixed with Sammy Berg. But haven't you heard, I'm more than a rapper. I'm an actor too, so here's a couple of nice guys getting their jackets. After you. After you. 
After you. After you. After you. After you've seen that scene, I mean, I'm in, right? But I've been sitting on the ringer. In addition to the spitting, I'm a hell of a singer. Okay. If you had more punchlines or more tongue-in-cheek comments about the industry or how comedians have to perform themselves to exhaustion to audition for SNL, then again, you could write this off as like a funny critique of the system. Uh, but there's none of that there. As you can see, Jake just continues to sell himself with full authenticity, which, for lack of a better term, confuses the vibe of the whole thing. It feels like a sketch, and it looks like a sketch, but it's meant to be taken seriously, and I think that's why a lot of people gravitated towards it. But don't worry, it goes on, and gets a little weirder. I'm a hell of a singer. I could be bouncing out on Broadway, but I'm running for 30 Rock, so I can hand deliver you the next dick in a box. Uh, not literally, <laughs> obviously, I just, I really want to give you the next big thing. Oh God. Dear Mr. Michaels, won't you give me a chance? My melodies will make the people laugh while they dance. All right, we are overdue for a compliment, so I'm just gonna say that Jake is clearly not untalented. He wrote the song, composed the music, he self-produced every aspect of it. He clearly put a lot of effort and energy into this. But I think the fact that he put so much effort into it comes across and I think could be added to the fuel of the fire that we all know is coming. Personally, I would not insinuate that I have a big dick or promise that I could make people laugh while they dance in my SNL TikTok audition. Um, probably because I wouldn't have made one. Plus, the actual audition process for SNL requires a lot of professionalism and composure and really just luck. And if you just read any book by one of the 300 cast members, you'll hear the same thing. It's my melodies will make the people laugh while they dance. I'll write, I'll perform, man, I'll sweep the stage, but whatever it is, I'm ready to do it in Studio 8H. What do you say? Did I die? Forget you to bite. Maybe we could try it live on a Saturday night. So check my feed. You'll agree where I should be in September. Right with Colin Keenan, Chloe, and Bowen as an SNL cast member. Hey, we survived it. Congrats to us. Clearly, it's awkward, but this really is not the worst thing in the world, and it's not doing any active harm to anybody. In fact, I think the worst thing that I could say about this is that it feels narcissistically dorky? Or maybe, like, ego-influenced nerdcore? I don't know, hopefully something in there makes sense. This video just existed on Jake's TikTok in peace for a few days, but that tranquility did not last long people started responding to it and reacting to it, which drove up its engagement, making the algorithm share it more, and suddenly, you've got yourself a video with 4.1 million views. The initial reaction to this, which stayed in the comments section of the original video, wasn't positive. Trying to determine which parts were punchlines, and oof, that got 25,000 likes. Immediately no, with over 30,000 likes. Your singing is good, but you forgot one important part, which is to be funny has a whopping 50,000, which seems a little excessive. I feel like this hurts your chances, lol, with, oh my god, okay, Jesus. Soon the reactions turned into video responses, which is really how the word got out and people began to know Jake Novak as a household name for TikTok. I don't know if household names happen there. Eventually that one video wasn't enough and people started going through his old work in order to showcase the other songs he'd made and started scrolling through his TikTok to find more things to turn into content. Jake apparently made a video in response to the recent terror attack in Texas and he wrote a song about it. Land of the free, home of the brave, land of the AR-15, home of kids in the grave. I've struggled to find the words, keep the disposition sunny. I'm always trying to turn the unfunny things funny. Responding in your own medium to tragedy is a debate we can have another time. But this just looked a little opportunistic and probably didn't convey the large range of emotions that a lot of people were feeling. Jake also had a song about the concept of wanting to be cancelled in order to spin the narrative into a career move, which people obviously launched onto. This might be an insensitive time, but like, that is irony. Like, at its fullest. I will say that the good memes that I saw from this were the people who took the format Jake had and then just used it to come up with their own punchlines. So that way they were using Jake as a prompt, not as a punching bag be the next SNL cast member. And here's why I should be a contender. Hey, Lauren Michaels. 
it's using the setup that we all know, but it can stand on its own, right? Instead of directing the humor at Jake, it's instead using the format as a launching off point and hopefully directed towards laughing with him and not at him. I want to be the next SNL cast member, and here's why I should be a contender. Hi, Lauren Michaels. Alexa, play ominous horror music, volume 10. Honestly, I think this is the best end result for the whole guy of the week system. It's that if someone isn't actively doing any harm, then we just take it and try to make our own jokes using the format, right? No one gets hurt. Sure, there's going to be some light clowning on him because it's the internet and nobody is safe, but I like the idea of using it as a prompt, right? Instead of just punching down on one guy. Haven't you heard? I'm more than a rapper. I'm an actor too. So here's a couple of nice guys getting their jackets. After you, 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 after you. That one goes on for three minutes. And I also like the ones that are parodies, right? They use the same song, but it's entirely new lyrics to showcase their cosplays or their own channel. That's really creative. I think that's probably the most impressive ones. I really appreciate the kind of reactions that add to something, and these are really creative examples. But for the majority of people, Jake remained something to laugh at, and eventually people moved off TikTok to find his other socials, where they showcased his pictures, his thirst traps, as he called them, and even went through his previous body of work. Meme emergency. Jake Novak was in a short film with Nathan Masri, founder of Garfield Eats, and it's about them solving the Israeli-Palestinian crisis? Some of these short films that he was in, which I could only find grainy photos of, definitely give off the old, millennial, edgy, insensitive humor kind of vibe to him. The time period doesn't justify it, but you can tell that Jake wants to be famous, and he was probably playing up to the comedy at the time. So up until this point, it's by the books. It's the familiar story of someone getting a spotlight, everyone tearing through their entire internet presence, finding something to use against them, the whole story, right? But this is actually where things diverge and the story changes. The part that really piqued my interest, the part I was genuinely very surprised to see, was that throughout all of this, through every step of it, Jake has been absolutely silent. Usually, when established celebrities get called out or cancelled, you will see the Notes app apology screenshot, or when YouTubers get called out, you'll see an apology video. It's like a personal press statement where they can address everything going on as well as trying to stay on top of things. And then those are the next things to be judged, right? People comb through the apology if they can tell that it's written insincerely or if they spot fake crying in the YouTube video, then that can be added to the story against them, right? It's just more fuel to the whole controversy. A lot of people, myself included, were expecting some kind of reaction, like a video about it, or even a song laughing at the whole thing, but there's nothing. Not a tweet, not a photo, no caption. Absolutely nothing. Nothing's been deleted. His SNL video is still his most recent after all this time. The rude comments are still there, nothing's been deleted, and duets are still turned on, so he hasn't even taken any steps to prevent this story from spreading. All of his socials are still. He's gone. Some people say that he's liked a few hate comments or other signs that he's active, but even if those were true, it's not a lot. And sure, other celebrities have silently disappeared for a few months when they've been called out, but those are usually over serious allegations where they legally can't say anything, and not over, like, a silly SNL skit. My first guess was that he was intentionally lying low and trying to keep the attention towards him to a minimum so that this could all move on and blow over. But that's not happening. His absence has been noticed by the people making fun of him, and if anything, they're actually waiting for him to come back now, which keeps him relevant. Where have you gone, Jake? Lots of stuff has happened while you've been gone. Yeah, that's odd. There seems to be this vacuum where people were expecting this big response and reaction as the next step, and then when it never came, people don't really know what to do. And that has led to the guy of the week status turning into a guy of the month thing, because he's been gone a while and people are still talking about him because there's no closure, there's no reaction. It's like telling a joke without knowing if people are laughing. 
if Jake's tactic really is to just wait this whole thing out, it is kind of a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, a reaction video or like a acknowledgement of any kind would be used as fuel to add to this fire and probably get wrapped into the whole narrative. But by not saying anything, people then expect that response, and when they don't get it, it keeps you in the conversation. And I don't know if this is going to blow over the way he would intend if he's doing that. I think Jake's SNL video was dorky, for sure. But I don't know. It's really weird to see this big of a response to something that really doesn't matter. Again, some of the creative responses I liked, I'm totally fine with that. But the weird obsession over waiting for him to come back or making fun of him to death seems like weirdly vindictive to me. Like there's no shortage of things to talk about online. Why are we still on this? I don't think any of these people are inherently cruel and I don't think TikTok or the internet in general was designed to be disparaging. I just think this was a really unfortunate example where this was very reaction worthy and the reactions just skewed negative really quickly. I really don't think that Jake is some monster. I do hope he's apologized for the tasteless jokes in his past, but people seem to be targeting him for playing too hard into the lovable goof character. And yes, maybe he did fly too close to the sun with a TikTok audition for SNL. Really, he just seems like an online comedian trying to break it into the entertainment industry. And there's a million of those. People accuse him for making videos for Facebook moms, but like, that's a job, that's a market that needs to be filled. Like, there's no shame in what he was doing if he was happy doing it. Plus, he got this far on talent alone, which clearly he worked for, judging by the effort he puts into his videos. Ten years ago, this guy would have had 10 million followers on Facebook. Like, that is the perfect time range for this humor. But I, I, I think TikTok might not be the best audience for antiquated millennial humor. Maybe. Now, there is one more element to this no-contact style of response, and unfortunately, it is not a fun one. By going radio silent and not responding in any way, we don't know how Jake is reacting to this, or how he's feeling, or even if he's okay. We've been viewing this story and others like it from the perspective of the audience, but I really think it's worth putting yourself in his shoes for a second. I can't imagine what it would be like to have something you've worked on receive millions of views, and then have all of it turn in on you so quickly. That's mortifying. Like, I'm online too, but I would much prefer slow incremental growth than an explosion of views and critiques and all of that attention just firing at you like a cannon. I do wonder and worry about how Jake is reacting to all of this, and because there's no acknowledgement that I can read into, I have nowhere to start. A quick way for people to write off content creators is to say that they're view hungry or they're clout chasing, and Jake clearly did want some fame as his actions imply, but it's hard for me to think that this was the attention that he was dreaming of. Social media is a numbers game. People get judged by their followers or view counts all the time. I think when people say they dream of being famous or loved, they're picturing some kind of brand with a million followers, but that's not the same as being loved. Online attention is not universal, right? Like, a view is not positive or negative, it's a view. Jake's video got four million of them, right? That's a number that he was probably dreaming of achieving, but now that he has it, I wonder if it's worth it to him. The whiplash of getting all the attention that you thought you wanted and then not all of it being positive or affirming is probably a lot to process, and I do worry about Jake thinking about all of that happening to one person. Without getting too serious here, I do hope that Jake has a good safety net of friends to take care of him if he's not dealing with this well, because again, it cannot be sustainable to have all of that just condensed onto one person. I hope Jake has ways of taking his mind off of this. There are some sightings that show he's at least active. One week ago, someone found his day job of working as a theme park performer, and it's good to know that he's up and working at least. And yeah, the comments didn't care about that too much. As for whatever he does next, his method of not responding means that he has all the cards, and really, he can do whatever he wants. Maybe he stays quiet and just deletes his TikTok account, unplugs completely, and tries to find some kind of peace in that. Or, 
he could go in the other direction and completely leverage this virality for his own commercial success. I see no wrong in him trying to spin some kind of positive off of this, especially after what he's been through. If brands want to reach out to him and cash out on that attention, he should be able to get any opportunity he can out of them. I could even see a show like Kimmel or Fallon doing a segment on, oh, those TikTok teens and having him on to talk about his experience. I think that would be a nice way to give him opportunities to get him out there. I honestly think it would be really funny if Saturday Night Live has him on, even as just a guest performance for one night. Like, this was the most I've seen people my age talk about SNL in a very long time. I think it would be good PR for them, and also they would get high numbers, and Jake would get to live his dream for one night. I don't know. I'm not in charge of SNL, but they should do that. Come on. I think what we can learn from all of this is that whenever the internet goes through its guy of the week phase, we have to understand that the jokes are not always weighted. And if you want to participate in those conversations, just remember that the jokes don't always have to be at the person's expense especially if they don't seem like they deserve it. Something can be cringe without it being awful. Like, Jake is allowed to be dorky online, and it doesn't warrant people bringing up his body or his comedy or insulting him directly. There should be a space online for people to be dorks. They make up an important part of the landscape. Yes, you can laugh at this video. I sure do. I memorized a chunk of it, and sometimes when I'm editing, I'll just hum a little bit of it, but it never goes further than that. We can laugh at what the video is without making it about the person. If I saw Jake on the street in real life, I'd probably want to check in on him and make sure he's okay, not transfer the joke to him in his real life, or film him at his side job. In conclusion, Jake Novak did not deserve any of the harassment that this whole thing brought him, and I hope his tactic of not responding is bringing him some kind of peace in this period of time. As for us, we should not mistake all online attention as positive attention. And whenever we can, we have to remember that these people on our screens are real. Well, uh, as I'm filming this outro, uh, it, it seems we have a new guy of the week. Um, apparently on Twitter, someone is claiming that expecting reading from writers with attention problems is immoral. So now... That's the conversation that everyone's talking about every week. <laughs> every week, it's something new. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate that. This is a cat. Do you like that? This is Cinnamon. I guess she's asleep. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You can like the video if you want to support me or subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell, I think, to ring it. I don't know what it does, but it's probably important. Thank you as always to my wonderful patrons for going the extra mile to support me financially. I don't know how to thank you guys enough. And I know I say that every week, but I still don't know how to thank you enough. So I'm just gonna keep saying it. You guys rule and I really appreciate you. And if anyone else wants to join them and have their name tattooed on my video forever, the link to my Patreon will be in my description as well as my other social medias like my dumb Instagram and my lame Twitter. You got anything you wanna add? Guess that's a no. Anyways, I hope you all have a good week. Thank you for watching and I will see you the next time I see you. So take care of yourselves. I love you lots. Bye.